How about the Boston Celtics? I guess I like this line. The playoffs don't start until you win on your home court. Cause, <laughs> cause look, I, when I did the video yesterday, I did a video yesterday saying these NBA playoffs are terrible. I don't think there's an argument that really could be found for it. And You could which, never go that route. Which by the way, I've said this equally on the video and people think I'm just crazy at this point. I still like watching bad playoffs. They've been bad. I just really like basketball, so I watch bad. Have basketball. the playoffs been bad, or have just the series that have been sweeps been bad? Because it's not like every series was like that, right? No, I thought there's been like, here's what I was comparing it to, right? Like two years ago, we had Game Seven weekend, mm -hmm. and do you know what sent us into Game Seven weekend in the first round? Damian Lillard's like step back three to like to win in Game Six and send the Blazers through, mm -hmm. and then the Spurs played a Game Seven, and I'm already blanking on the 17 other teams who played Game Seven right. in that weekend. But it just feels so far removed from what seemed like in the West anybody can get through it. And in the East, LeBron just got back. Could he still take this team there? And also Kyrie was injured and Love mm -hmm. was injured and they weren't all together at that point and clicking. And J.R. Smith was just learning how to play defense. All these things started happening. Uh -huh. So it still felt like there was a degree of uncertainty. Now it's, it very much seemed all the way from day one of the regular season that we're headed towards Warriors Cavs, but I've actually thought that the regular season, believe it or not, there was more fun, competitive matchups in the regular season that seemed to have more weight than there have been in these playoffs to an extent. So save for Jazz Clippers, which was seven, and Wizards Celtics, which went seven, mm -hmm. which I thought were good series. <laughs> Everything else has been- The thing is no one, not no one, I guess, but um, I mean, we can ask Dan about it. But I mean, how many people <laughs> expected the Jazz and the Clippers to go seven, right? But that's one of them that did, which was kind of a disappointment to many people. Not the casual fan who likes to see a game seven, but the just fan, the basketball yeah. fan is like, well, this shouldn't have happened this way. This is gonna be a disaster. Because what happens when you have a bunch of game sevens in early round series, and then they end up having to play a team that sweeps, as the Warriors obviously have done. The rest of, yeah. Then you're gonna have the second round and, and next round of each series be a disaster. Because one team is tired, which already had to go through a lot, and another team is already, generally from the front, better. And then they also swept through, so they're resting. And it's just it's gonna end up that way, because you have one team in the East that, now not anymore, has been sweeping through, and a team from the West that's sweeping through. So it just, it, it sets the stage for, um, I guess, the, I don't wanna call it an unfair advantage, but mm -hmm. it's an unfair advantage because of the rest versus the mental and physical exhaustion. You know, most people would say, for. they'd be like, well, just get the one seed then. <laughs> or just sweep your series. <laughs> or get Why the one seed as the, bo as the Boston, <laughs> as the Boston Celtics, Celtics did and do nothing with it. So, um, so I'm doing this clip and halfway through I'm like, it's like an hour before tip off of Celtics Cavs. And I'm going like, I gotta stop saying like the self, like the Cavaliers are gonna, are gonna crush them and all these things because like I've seen crazier stuff happen in yeah. sports. For all I know, the Celtics win this game. <laughs> For all you know, and they actually, you shouldn't have done it that way. They actually come back and win. And it came on, look, there's been unlikely Heroes in in get Kelly Olynyk is an unlikely person, and I'm all for it. The Kelly Olynyk show was great in Game Seven. Marcus Smart was the worst volume three point shooter in the NBA in 2014, 2015, 2015, 2016, and he was like 23rd out of like I think everybody this year. So the idea that Marcus Smart got hot from three really does debunk every theory. You think of, but here's the thing that I was most impressed by. Uh, Brad Stevens, who I've said on a thousand occasions that I like him as a head coach, I think he's creative, and mm -hmm. I think he gets the best out of players that aren't necessarily as good as they appear, right? We know Marcus Smart is a three-point shooter. Marcus Smart got hot, and Marcus Smart could not miss. And they don't have Isaiah Thomas, and we're gonna get to that in just a second. So yeah, Brad Stevens in his press conference said, at some point, I thought the law of averages had to kick in. I'm just like, oh, cause this guy's like a nerd. Like, like he's not, not a player coach, he's just yeah. a nerd. And that's good, he's a basketball nerd, he's an analytics nerd. Cause when you say something like the law of average is gonna kick in, it basically means like the Cavs can't shoot 80% the whole series. And we can't shoot 20% <laughs> the, the whole series. They're still professional basketball players. It's, you know, um, and many people, um, I hate to cross over with the sports references here, but um, people like, well, some of them are upset about the new wave of the way that managers and GMs approach baseball mm -hmm. and who they get on their rosters and the way they approach 
162 game season mm -hmm. with the numbers. Like, well, the numbers, if they send off a guy who's been with the team for six years and is beloved by the fans, they don't care. Mm -hmm. The one they brought in to replace him, that's point two more better than he does in the past. Like, the law of average is eventually gonna catch up. That's gonna, his batting average is gonna get there eventually. And that small change is gonna get us through a seven game series, you know? So that's the thought process it sounds like Brad Stevens is going with. Well, if we keep throwing three-pointers up, at some, point, at some point they have to drop with professional athletes. I've seen it drop in practice. Eventually it's gonna happen. Now, before I think I was never an NBA player, especially in the 80s, um, I would assume <laughs> that if you launch so many three-pointers and you miss a certain amount, your team and your coach in general is gonna say, hey, you might wanna stop doing that, you're hurting us. <laughs> right. That logic is out the window in 2017. Oh, completely. It's been and in the era of the Splash Brothers, keep shooting. Well, it, those guys just hit anyway. So but I think matter. what I think is so funny about that too is like then what comes, what stems from the you're taking a ton of threes, and if you're making them, great. You don't have to worry about offensive rebounds. Well, because you're making the threes. But then the commentary that usually follows is, man, they're not getting any rebounds because they're jacking up threes. And those are the easiest things to rebound when most of your players sure. are on the perimeter and you have three under the hoop and compared to the one playing offense. Uh, so in terms, so here, I, mm, there's a lot to take from this game. I think there's a rough take and it's unfair, but it, there is some degree of weight to it. Without Isaiah Thomas on the floor because of his hip injury that most likely requires surgery, so he's out for the NBA playoffs as it is, uh, they were able to put in a better defensive overall team. Mm -hmm. And the Celtics are a team who wins through defense. They win by defense creating turnovers and then succeeding in transition. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the, Isaiah Thomas had an absolutely remarkable season and was, I think, still the heart and soul of, of that Celtics team. And in this one-off instance, Brad Stevens said in the first half, at the first half, like, uh, what do they call it when they, like, the inside oh, the locker yeah. room? Oh, when they the interviewed in between? Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, pep talk, okay. yeah, in the locker room. He said that, I don't think that we're playing to what the score is representing. I actually thought we played to a lot closer than what the score is representing. So we didn't necessarily lose belief, and they could have rolled over, but they didn't quit. And that totally counteracts the opinion of one of the, the, the hot take uh, Tony Maserati, who's this guy Felger and Maz, who got shredded on Twitter rightfully for saying that it feels like... I'm no doctor, oh, not that one. He is no doctor, by the way. I know we're going to fight about this, but it's impossible to include that Isaiah Thomas and the Celtics have not quit. Have not quit. And so wow, he gets shredded by a few people for saying, how could you, and he's, I mean, the people were right about this one. How do you claim that Isaiah Thomas quit? Isaiah Thomas, who played with a torn labrum, lost his sister tragically, had the single greatest scoring performance by a Celtic in playoff history. It wasn't the highest scoring performance, but he did it on better efficiency, at least since 1984 when Basketball Reference started keeping all their notes. That guy quit? You ain't getting to game one of the NBA Eastern Conference Finals this season. You're not getting the number You're one seed. You're not getting seed. the number one seed, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, every I think, again, back to the casual fans, if you look up, you'd go, wait a second, Boston is the one seed and Cleveland's the two? Again, it matters of the way the season ended, the way the season culminated whoever players were injured before and then came in strong it's just you get your you get your playoff wheels going so i mean I, this this is more of a uh i think as we were talking more of a, a matchup where you would expect the Cavs to be the one to do it so right. it's congrats on the on the win i think it's it's good for basketball it doesn't change the big picture <laughs> but i mean yeah it, and I, I hate calling it so quickly but is this has to happen now for the next what, five, four games you got going? Three, yeah, well, they can make the well, seven. The if, to they, win the if, series? if they can go to seven. You're crazy, got, That's what I'm saying, but <laughs> like, so, so that's what I mean. No one believes that, but the Celtics have to believe that. Right, right? and I actually think that, look, you have a lot of motivation. So what are you gonna do to get to that? Well, to I think that there's a lot of motivation. End. I think that's a lot, of, a big spark to say like, hey, what if we win game four and we get to go home? It's a 2-2 series. One game at a time. But this this is also, by the way, this happened last year with the Raptors. Yeah. So the uh, Cavs went up 2-0 in the series. <laughs> And then they lost two in Toronto, and the Cavs won the next two to close I mean, Look the at the series. finals. I mean, the Warriors lost the, the finals last year. They were up. They blew a 3 1 lead. 3 1 lead. Uh, lastly, the LeBron James note um, he snapped at a reporter for asking a question about what went wrong in this game specifically. And he basically said, Well, here's the video of it, but I'll tell JR so he knows. Their defense or just not, not feeling it or what? Um, no, it was just pretty poor. I mean, 
you want me to say? Yeah. Seems like you only answer. You only ask questions when we lose. I think it's, it's a weird thing with you, Kenny. Always come around when we lose, I swear. Yeah, okay. LeBron, to the, to the people who aren't a big fan of LeBron James, they call him a crybaby, and he can be a crybaby a lot of the time. Um, it was his worst playoff game in like the last 58 of them. He scored under 15 points for the first time in a while. And it shows that the Cavs are, in fact, human, even though they came out to the tune of the Monstars. Do you know that? No. That was their walkout music. Oh, that, was, that was the problem. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Funny, they came out to the tune of the Monstars, and, and our president was holding a Monstar-like ball <laughs> to, to share his powers with people. In Waiting for it to kick in. Saudi Arabia. Yes. Riyadh. Donald Trump stole the power from LeBron James, somehow. He was dunking miles. over the weekend. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, favorite, subscribe, comment below. You should follow J.R. Jackson, at J.R. Jackson, if you want to see... Uh, the son of J.R. Jackson is Instagram. It's very popular. He will be the next great Los Angeles Laker. <laughs> I mean, he's a Laker fan. Wrong team. Saying. The wrong sport.